Hello and welcome back to another video guys. In this video I want to talk with you about the Mixtrol Mixture of Experts Large Language Model which achieves impressive scores on various benchmarks indicating that it could potentially be a successor of the LAMR2 model as the most capable open large language model. And yeah, in this video I want to briefly talk with you about Mixture of Experts model then I will show you how to run the Mixtral model on your own computer and also how to potentially fine tune the Mixtral model. And here it has to be said that still a lot of research is ongoing investigating how to train Mixture of Experts large language models. But more on that later. Only 24 hours ago the Mixtral AI team published a Mixtral 8x7 billion large language model which according to Mistral outperforms the LAMR2 70 billion LLM on most benchmarks with six times faster inference which is incredible news for everyone working with such big large language models and it also comes with a permissive Apache 2 license which allows you to also use it for commercial purposes and as the authors describe here it outperforms the LAMR2 70 billion model on most benchmarks but also matches or outperforms the GPT 3.5 models on most standard benchmarks which is very impressive and the first key highlight of the model but at the same time also has to be taken with a grain of salt because several studies have shown that it's pretty easy to achieve better results on common LLM benchmarks for example by adding the training data of the evaluation benchmark to the data or like training data used for pre-training the large language model and this way we can see here for the 7 billion LAMA 2 model compared to the version which didn't include any evaluation training data of the MLMLU benchmark achieving a score of around 43 compared to when adding the training data of the MLMLU evaluation benchmark we can see that a way higher score could be achieved and this holds true across benchmarks as we can see here different varieties it also holds true against different backbones or like foundation LLMs as you can see here so I definitely don't want to say that Mistral added data of evaluation benchmarks but it's always helpful to keep that in mind when seeing benchmarks and I think the best proof as of right now is just working with such LLMs yourself and figuring out their capabilities. I mean like as a company obviously you want to train and publish models that achieve the highest scores on all the benchmarks out there to show how good your model is which then attracts investors so obviously that could be a helpful let's say trick to get more investment into your company. So yeah, I really don't want to make the impression that Mistral did it, but I just want you guys to be aware that this is technically possible. Okay, another highlight of the Mistral model is that it can handle English, French, Italian, German and Spanish, which is really cool. Mistral is a French company, so I think that's why they're also interested in incorporating other languages than English. So definitely something interesting, I guess, especially for developers in Europe. One thing that I, however, found interesting is the following table where you can see different benchmark, the ARCC, Hello S, MMLU. I hope I pronounced them correctly. And you can see those are translated to different languages, for example, French, German, Spanish, and Italian. And then the mixture model is compared to the LAMA 2 70 billion and the LAMA 1 33 billion model and while you can see that the Mixtral model achieves the best results for all four languages it has to be said that especially the LAMA 2 model was solely focused on English language and therefore it's not really a big surprise that it achieves worse results than the Mixtral model which was trained also using French, German, Spanish and Italian but still cool to have a model that is not only good on English language, but also on French, German, Spanish, and Italian. And the last thing that I would like to highlight is that the Mixtral model is able to handle a context of up to 32,000 tokens, which in case you're not already thinking or processing in tokens is around 50 pages of text. So yeah, also compared to the context window of 4,000 from the LAMA2 model, this is definitely a huge step. So really cool that the Mixtral model supports a context size of 32,000 tokens. All right, as I mentioned already in the start of the video, the Mixtra model is a mixture of experts model. And here we can see an example of what that actually means. So we kind of have a layer that has an input and usually you would see something like a feed forward neural network or also called multi-layer perceptron. So a dense neural network. And here, instead of kind of passing all the neurons in, in the neural network, we first have a gating network that decides 
where our input should be passed to. So we have multiple experts from 1 to n and then the gating network decides to which experts we pass our input. And as you can maybe imagine, this has several benefits. For example, one is listed here in this really nice blog article from Hugging Face where you can see a mixture of experts enable models to be pre-trained with far less compute, which means you can dramatically scale up the model or dataset size with the same compute budget as a dense model. In particular, a mixture of experts model should achieve the same quality as its dense counterpart much faster during pre-training. So if we jump back to this illustration, we can see during the forward pass, only these two expert models are passed. And this way we can save a lot of compute not passing through all the other expert networks, which then during back propagation also means that we only have to calculate the gradients of these two expert networks. And with this, our model can contain way more parameters while actually during inference or also during training, a smaller part of the overall architecture is trained or passed. And that's also why mixture of experts models are called sparse because not all the neurons or all the parameters are used during a forward inference and also during back propagation, but only some of them. And this approach allows given the same budget to pre-train way bigger large language models. And very likely that's the reason why Mistral also train such a model with a mixtral model. And to summarize the mixture of expert networks, we can say that their pre-training is much faster compared to the ones of dense models. Mixture of expert models also allow a faster inference compared to a model with the same number of parameters because we only pass the experts and hence have less computational effort inside our network. For example, for the mixtral, we pass two experts per tokens instead of all eight experts inside the mixtral LLM. And one downside of mixture of expert models is that they still require a high reram as all experts are loaded in memory because you can't really compute which token will be processed by which expert. So you kind of have to have them available inside your reram at all times and can't really unload them or load them dynamically because that would just take too much time. And now you might ask yourself, why do the experts in mixture of experts diversify instead of collapsing into a single model? And how can the router learn to dispatch the data to the right expert? And if that's the case, I can recommend you to check out this paper towards understanding mixture of experts in deep learning, which was published last year in August. So this shows that mixture of experts are still heavily researched and probably the mixtural model will help gaining new knowledge having such a big community using it, potentially at least. And one of the empirical results that I wanna share with you here is that they found that the cluster structure of the underlying problem and the non-linearity of the expert are pivotal to the success of mixture of experts. And I think with text data, that kind of makes sense that you, for example, have medical domains or financial domains that you can distribute certain tokens to a specific domain or expert. In more practical terms, this means that inside the transformer architecture, we can see here that the feed forward network is replaced with a mixture of experts network, which we can see here. And in this implementation, for example, they replace the feed forward network in every other transformer feed forward layer. So we can see here in the following transformer block that the feed forward layer is still there. And that's why they half the amount of transformer blocks here, just so you don't get confused by this illustration. And then really thinking of large language models, which are processing tokens, we can now say here, and this is also how it's done with the Mistral model, the router decides which expert network processes which token. So here we can see the token more is processed by the second expert network, while the second token parameters is processed or passed through the first expert network. All right, to now run the model, we will use the popular transformers library from Hugging Face and they also wrote a blog article how to run the mixture model using their library. And before we start doing so, I quickly want to show you the VRAM requirements which are very high. So here we can see the mixture model is roughly equivalent in size to a 45 billion parameter dense model. And this is kind of one of the downsides of mixture of experts model. While you can scale your model and have more capacity in your model, your VRAM requirements increase at the same time. But the benefit obviously is because you don't pass all the experts during the forward pass that your inference is faster. And here we can see that it takes at least 23 gigabytes of VRAM to load the model just with 4-bit precision. And this is also a field where I could see a lot of progress in the next 
coming months or weeks with having way more people exploring such a sparse mixture of experts large language model. And there's already a work out here, a mixture of quantized experts, which could be also interesting for you guys. And I'm sure soon we will see how people start running the mixture model, maybe on their CPU or at least on GPUs using less VRAM. But yeah, as of right now, these are kind of the requirements to run the model. And luckily Nvidia was kind enough to support my channel with their RTX 6000 Aether GPU, which has 48 gigabytes of VRAM. I will also link this GPU in the description box in case you're interested in the GPU. And yeah, it would be actually really cool to only load the weights or parameters that we use per token. So this way we could drastically reduce the memory or the rerun needed to load the model. But for example, if you download the mixture model, it has a size of around 93 gigabytes. And you can imagine loading and unloading experts of the model takes way too long. And now we can see here how to run the mixture model on your computer in case you have enough VRAM. So first make sure to install the Transformers library with the version 4.36, then also all the other libraries that I've listed here. I'm using those specific versions. And then we can see here, this is the model ID on hugging face. So we can see I'm using the instruct model, which obviously is a behavior we know from ChatGPT. And this just specifies that the model should be loaded in 4-bit precision, which I also specify here. And this is an internal computation type, which by default was set to float32 and I got a warning. So I had to specify this specifically here to torch float 16. And then the Transformers library makes it super convenient for us to load the model and then to pass prompts to the model and generate our outputs using a pipeline, which in this case is a text generation pipeline. Here we pass the model ID, which we have specified here. And yeah, those are more or less hyperparameters to load the model. Then I just press shift enter. All right, and once our model is loaded, we can then convert our instruction into a prompt and the mixture model expects the following format. So we can see here a beginning of sentence token. Then we have this instruction beginning string and the instruction ending string and then end of sentence token, which indicates that the generation of new token should be ended after this token. And luckily we don't really have to worry about all that because this is already handled by the pipeline that we have initialized here. So all we need to do is to bring our instructions and the responses from the assistant into the following format. So we have a message list where we have the role user and then the instruction, which is here called content. And then for example, for the assistant, you would then have the role assistant and here will be the answer from the assistant. And yeah, maybe I quickly run this command so you can see how this actually looks like. So if we, so here you can see the beginning of sentence token, then the start of instruction, the actual instruction, and here we have end of instruction. And now the model knows, okay, it's time for me to generate the reply. And for this, then we forward this prompt to the pipeline define how many tokens should be generated as a maximum, which is 256 here. Definitely feel free to increase it if you want. We want to sample. So this means we are not taking the next token with the highest probability, but sample through a certain collection of tokens. And the temperature impacts the probabilities of certain tokens. Usually it's said the lower the temperature is or the closer it's to zero, the more deterministic the answers of the assistant will be, which means you will see the same answer more often. While if you use a higher temperature around one or even above, the assistant's answers will be more diverse. And yeah, the top K just means that we pick out of the top 50 tokens with the highest probability. And top P defines that we build a cumulative sum of probabilities to 0.95. And since we also define top K, if it takes more than 50 tokens to reach a cumulative sum of 0.95, then we only sample from the top 50 most probable tokens. Just to explain these settings, and then we get our output, and the instruction in this case is explain what a mixture of experts is in less than 100 words. And, and yeah, let's see what the mixture model basically says about itself. All right, and here we can see the format that we had before and the model understood that it had to generate the answer after this end of instruction string. And since I usually like to work with LLMs via uh, user interface, I wrote this pretty concise script 
that allows you to interact with their mixed flow model on a UI. I will link it down in the description box, so feel free to check it out and run it yourself. And for demonstration purposes, I will quickly run it by typing python mixtrol.py and what we've seen before, the model will now be loaded and then we will be able to interact with the LLM using a user interface. And now you can copy this link, open it in your browser and start interacting with the Mixtral LLM. All right, and now we can basically ask the same question again. Explain what a mixture of experts is in less than 100 words. And, and here I was actually surprised how fast the generation is, which partly is thanks to the mixture of experts model, which allows way faster inference for having such a big large language model. But at the same time, I used to work a lot with RTX 3090 GPUs from NVIDIA. And now having this RTX 6800 GPU really makes a noticeable difference when generating tokens or text. But this is not only limited to the RTX 6000. I think you also will see a similar leap if you use the RTX 4090. And I'm actually curious if people are able to run the mixture model on a RTX 4090. So in case any one of you is trying that, please let me know in the comments. I will be very keen to, to know how it goes. And yeah, now I could go on and ask the model to tell me more. And yeah, I guess it's obvious why I rather interact with models in this way than running individual code cells. All right, Hugging Face also described in their blog post how to fine tune the mixture model using their TRL library. All right, to now find you in the mixture model, we again can have a look at the Hugging Face blog post where they describe how to find you in the mixture model using their TRL library. And I have to say, planning on creating a video on how to fine tune large language models using the Transformers library anyway, because the procedure for fine tuning the Llama 2, the Falcon or the Mixtral model is more or less always the same. And for that reason, I'm planning to create a specific video for that, which I will upload soon. So in case that sounds interesting to you, definitely make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And for fine tuning, the mixture model, or in a broader sense, sparse mixture of experts models is definitely more complicated or more difficult compared to dense large language models. And this is primarily because the overfitting dynamics are very different between dense and sparse models and sparse models are more prone to overfitting. And one very interesting paper is this one, STMO, I just call it, Designing Stable and Transferable Sparse Expert Models by a research lab from Google Brain. And here in chapter four, fine tuning performance of sparse models, we can see, for example, this comparison of two different tasks. So we have this CB task and the record task. And for the CB task, we have 250 train sequences, while for the record task, we have 138,000 train sequences, so tremendously more. And we can see that the sparse model is able to achieve a higher score on the train eval for both tasks, showing the blue line here. So we have a higher score compared to the green one, which is the dense train eval. And this holds true for both cases. But the issue with a sparse mixture of experts model is that fine tuning them is a little bit harder. Here you can see for the task, it has only a few train sequences, 250. We can explore that the dense model achieves higher scores on the validation data. We can see here this red line is higher for the dense validation evil compared to the, let's say, orange or yellow sparse validation evil. While for this task where we have many train sequences, it's the opposite way that the sparse model achieves higher scores for the validation evil compared to its dense counterpart with a red line here, which is a first observation that to effectively fine tune a sparse mixture of experts model, we need many, many examples of that specific task. And yeah, please keep that in mind because we will come back to that in a second. Then another very interesting finding of the paper is they try to investigate which parameters of the overall architecture or model should be fine-tuned. And for that, they try different configurations. For example, one is to only fine-tune the parameters inside the mixture of experts network, which more or less means we only fine-tune our experts for a specific task. And one very interesting finding is that fine-tuning all non-mixture of expert parameters is almost as effective as fine tuning the whole model. And this might be not super obvious, but the mixture of expert makes up for the majority of all the parameters. And therefore only fine tuning the non mixture of expert parameters can speed up your fine tuning by a huge margin. So that's definitely a very interesting finding. And then in further research, they also found that for sparse model, it's actually better to have a smaller 
batch size, 65,000 is still pretty large, but increasing the batch size further with these orange bars shows that the score is actually getting worse, while for dense model, it's kind of the opposite way where the score further increases, at least until here. Same with the learning rate. It makes sense to use a higher learning rate for sparse models. So here we can see for dense model, it's, it's actually better to use a lower learning rate, which we have here. While for sparse model, it seems like choosing a higher learning rate leads to better fine tuning results. And then there's one more paper that I want to show you, which is called Mixture of Experts Meets Instruction Tuning, a winning combination for large language models. So that already should make us a little bit excited, especially in context with the mixture model. And I want to keep it short here. So what the authors found is that compared to dense models, mixture of expert models or sparse mixture of experts models benefit more from instruction tuning and are more sensitive to the number of instruction tuning tasks. So here in red, we can see the sparse mixture of experts model, while in blue it's dense counterpart. And while we can see that the dense model also benefits from more instruction tuning examples, we can see that the score or the average evil metrics are higher for the sparse model and also the gains are higher overall. And this also matches the observation that we have made here that having many examples for a specific task helps the sparse model to better adapt to that specific task. So overall, we can say that fine tuning sparse mixture of experts models is harder than fine tuning dense LLMs because sparse mixture of expert models are more prone to overfitting. And to overcome this, having many examples for a specific task is helpful during fine tuning. And in the context of large language models, this means having many instruction tuning examples of a specific task is very beneficial for fine tuning a mixture of experts, large language model, like the mixture model. All right, and that's it for today's video. Let me know in the comments what you think about the mixture model. I definitely think it's cool to see kind of new architecture with a mixture of experts models. And I'm very curious to see what people will create using the mixture model. And when the first person is able to maybe even run the model on their CPU or to find a better way to quantize the model. And yeah, that's it for today. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope to see you in the next video. Until then, have a great time. Bye bye. <laughs>